NASA's new Mars rover, Perseverance, is on its way to Mars. Perseverance lifted off from Florida this morning for a six and a half month journey. It's expected to arrive in February of next year. So what are we hoping to learn from this mission? Retired astronaut Terry Virts joins me now. And Terry, my producer Molly and I were talking before the show about how Perseverance looks like WALL-E, which shows the extent of our space knowledge. So we are really glad to have you here. It's good to be here, and it is a pretty cool looking rover for sure. It's cute, it's cute. All right, so um, Perseverance is headed to a site where a previous rover discovered signs of a habitable lake. So what are scientists hoping to find this time around? Yeah, it's landing in a dried up lake bed. Of course, we think it dried up about four billion years ago, so it's been a while since it had water. But one of the big goals of this mission is to see if Mars ever had life before. And so some of the instruments on the rover and I think what's most exciting, a potential sample return mission where this rover will scoop up dirt and put it in a future mission to send it back to Earth. Those can answer the questions, were there, was there life, at least in this one Jezero Lake there on Mars? If we do discover signs of life on Mars, do we have any idea what that life might look like? Well, that's the interesting thing. You know, we tend to see everything in human-centric um, terms when you watch Hollywood movies, the aliens always look like basically humans with you know big eyes or green skin or something. So we can look for what we know life is like here on Earth. But if there is some different form that's not carbon based, you know who knows? Uh, it's hard to say. So we'll look for something that is similar to what we have on Earth, uh, but we'll see what it is. One of the interesting things is that asteroids from Mars, you know, a, a asteroid impacts it makes a giant explosion. And these rocks can actually make their way back to Earth. We find them in Antarctica on a regular basis. And there may be a similar thing where asteroids from Earth could go to Mars. So there is a little bit of transfer between planets, in, even in our solar system. So some way there are Martians very curious about people on Earth. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if they are, they're, if they came from Earth or whatever, they're pretty durable because they, they had to survive an asteroid impact and then probably millions of years floating in deep space. So. I don't know if anything can survive that, but it's a, it's a theory, it's a possibility. And what do you see for the future of space exploration, given where we are right now? Yeah, it's been a rough, I mean, to say 2020 has, has been a rough year is an understatement. In fact, the team at JPL, and which is in California, that manages these uh, robotic missions had an earthquake this morning. There was an earthquake in California. My uh, assistant called me and said, hey, it's, it's, there's an earthquake now. So, you know, pa pandemic, these guys had to go through pandemic. They had to go through an earthquake to get the launch off. Um, I think the future of space exploration is bright, especially NASA's robotic missions are, are pretty exciting. Um, this, like I said, this rover will require future missions to go pick up the samples and fly them back to Earth. Uh, there's just a lot to learn. We're just, we've just scratched the surface in our solar system. Uh, we have another mission potentially to one of the moons of Jupiter. Um, that has frozen ice and frozen water. So there's a lot of exciting things to do out there. And I hope we don't, I hope we keep our eyes on the stars and don't get too stuck down here on Earth. Because although these missions are expensive, the money that we spend on them is not spent in space, it's spent down here on Earth. And it really is an impetus for the economy that's very positive. That's a great point. Former astronaut Terry Virts, thank you for all the learning you're doing and all the teaching you're doing for us. We appreciate it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.